All right, hello everyone. Um, I am here today because I've started an initiative called I'm a Guru. You can see the lovely logo behind me, courtesy of Grey Mom, as I was mentioning before. Um, I'm a Guru is not an English word, so you might be wondering where it's from or what it means, but sit tight, we'll, we'll get to that. First, I want to show you where this thing started. Um, that, I hope you would all agree, is beautiful. That is Rwanda. It's the land of a thousand hills, and it is God's gift to this earth. Uh, there's a saying that God spends his days elsewhere, but he lays his head in Rwanda. And from looking at the place, I would agree. I'm showing you just a little bit of this inspirational country so you can understand why I was inspired to do something that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So it started with this beautiful place, but more specifically with a very beautiful person. And that is Jeanette. Once again, just, just soak that in for a second. She is a gorgeous little girl. She's eight. And she's, um, take, this picture was taken on the day she moved into her new home for orphans in Rwanda. She inspired me in a way that none of the other kids in Rwanda that I met could have because of something special about her, which, again, sits high, we'll get there. Before I talk a little more about her, I want to show you more of what the rest of the people of her country are like. They are a people of dance, of music, of energy. We went to a coffee plantation, or a coffee washing station, and these people met us just to show us their national dance. This is a trained troupe that were phenomenal. <laughs> they invited us to dance with us, and it was downright embarrassing. Um, but then it gets, it gets cuter, because these kids are kids from Jeanette's class. They were also showing us their dance. They were also trained and practiced. It, it gets cuter still when you see the little kids that just run up the hill to show you anyway. Um, nobody invited him. Nobody asked him, but he sang us a song about education and danced for us. They are an active, vibrant, colorful people. They walk from place to place. They carry remarkable loads on their heads. They, they, they lug their water in those yellow jars. They are just living and breathing and being. These small children chased after us just to get a glimpse because we were foreign. What I'm, I'm, I'm telling you all of this, not just to flash pictures of Africa and say, well, look, I've been there. It's not, not for that purpose. The purpose is to show you that they are living a vibrant, happy, beautiful, active life. You might not understand why that's so impressive unless you know about the genocide that happened 17 years ago. Thousands of people killed in 100 days, neighbors killing neighbors. This country has scars. This was once a church. It became the site of massacre and is now a memorial. The beauty that this picture encompasses is incredible given what happened there. They've made this scar into something lovely that can help them remember what they don't want to ever have happen again. But not all scars can be covered with flags and things so easily. Some of them just can't. This is Jeanette. The last picture I showed you didn't show quite all of her. Um, I talked to you about what she was. She's a happy little girl, but now I'm going to talk to you about what she's missing. Pretty obvious there. It's, it's legs. Um, <laughs> which is why Amaguru means legs in Kenya Rwanda, which is the language that she speaks. What I want to do for Jeanette is to see her like those other kids. I want to let her run after a truck. I want to let her carry things from place to place and ride a bicycle. I just, I, I want her to be the way that they are. She's been graciously given a wheelchair by an aid organization that has improved her life, but think about this. How would you do in a wheelchair? How far would you make it? I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get far on a hill like that. So while that is helpful, I feel like we can do better. I mean, this is, this is an innovation talk, right? There's got to be something that can be done for her. So the simple question that I asked was, why can't we give her legs? I mean, we have plenty. Just send her a prosthetic leg or two. And that, that should get her going, right? The complication is that this picture here was taken of legs of a friend of mine. He's only missing one leg. And he had these replaced every six months as he grows. Every six months. Think back to those rutted roads and ask and answer the question of how are we going to get legs to her every six months? The answer is we, we can't. So I propose that we do one better. With this thing called Amaguru, with this thing called legs, I'm proposing that we design a new leg that is able to grow with her so it can be replaced more on the order of years instead of months. So she can get walking now and not have to wait until she's done growing. A standard prosthetic is made up of three main pieces. It's a, it's a little more complicated than that, but this is simple enough for the, for the purpose of today's talk. You have the socket that actually attaches to the residual limb. You have the shaft that is replacing her shin bone, and you have a foot. 
For Jeanette, the foot is going to be pretty standard. It's not anything too complicated to buy a foot, you know, off the shelf if there were shelves of prosthetic feet laying around. Um, so that is not really where the innovation lies. Similarly for the shaft, the, the pylon, as it's called here, um, that's not incredibly complicated, especially since she's missing both legs, so I get to pick how tall she is. So she'll just grow in two-inch spurts instead of, instead of the way that most children grow, which is a little more gradually. The innovation comes in the cup. And that's something that's going to be a lot harder to work out and that we've been working on with the help of Graymov and Jason for quite some time now to figure out how exactly to make that grow with her. I have my ideas. I'm not going to share them up here, but if you want to ask me afterwards, we can talk about it. Um, but yeah, the, the, the purpose of this is just legs. It's a very simple thing that already exists. Prosthetic leg is right there behind me, but making it grow for her. So I just, I encourage you to look at that little smiling face and just to feel something. Uh, and if you feel the way that I feel, if you are inspired by her, then check out the website. It's giveamaguru.org. Give legs. A simple statement, but it means the world to her. If you want to keep up to date on what we're doing, that's where you can head. If you are in any way interested in talking to me, I'll obviously be around. But I just want you to be inspired by her. And if you are, then help me to mobilize innovation. Thank you.